السلام عليكم طلاب المرحلة الثانية كلية الصيدلة جامعة بابل Our topic today is Gestural Glomerular Complex The Gestural Glomerular Complex is located at the site where the distal tubule the distal tubule extends back to the glomerulus and then it passes between the afferent and efferent arterioles the distal tubule side that is nearest to the glomerulus is characterized by densely nucleated cells called macula densa. So, macula densa is a densely nucleated cells which are related to the distal tubule and they are situated nearest to the glomerulus. In the adjacent afferent arteriole, the smooth muscle cells of the media are modified as a specialized secretory cells called juxtra glomerular cells. In the afferent arteriole, the smooth muscle cells that are located at the media of the afferent arteriole are modified as a specialized secretory cells called juxtaglomerular cells. So we have the macula densa, which are part of the distal tubule situated nearest to the glomerulus, and we have the juxtaglomerular cells, which are a specialized secretory cells modified from the smooth muscle cells in the afferent arteriole. These juxtaglomerular cells contain granules of inactive renin, which is an enzyme that function in the conversion of angiotensinogen to angiotensin. And we will discuss the, these agents and it's important in the regulation of blood pressure. As we said, this is the distal tubule, this is the afferent and the efferent arterioles, and this is the glomerulus. Another figure. This is the distal tubule, and as you see, it become it become nearest to the glomerulus, where it pass back. Okay. Another figure. This is the glomerulus and these are the afferent and the efferent arteriole and this is the distal tubule when it extends back to the glomerulus. Okay. These cells which are situated in the distal tubule and are nearest to the afferent and efferent arterioles will be a specialized cells called the macula densa. Whereas this part is called the juxtra glomerular cells, which are a specialized secretory cells modified from the smooth muscle cells in the afferent arteriole. These cells contain the inactive renin, which is an enzyme important for the conversion of angiotensinogen into angiotensin. Renin functions by means of angiotensin II to produce vasoconstriction of the efferent arterioles 
as a mean of preventing serious decrease in the glomerular filtration rate. While angiotensin II also increases sodium reabsorption indirectly by stimulating aldosterone secretion from the adrenal gland. And it will directly increase the sodium reabsorption by the proximal tubule. So angiotensin II is very important for regulation of the glomerular filtration rate by indirect effect stimulating the secretion of aldosterone from the adrenal gland and it will act directly by increasing sodium reabsorption by the proximal tubular cells in the renal system. The juxta glomerular complex monitors the systemic blood pressure by sensing the stretch of efferent arteries and it monitors the conversion concentration of sodium chloride in the tubular filtrate. So when we ask how the juxta glomerular complex monitor the systemic blood pressure by two means. The first is by sensing the stretch in the apparent arterial wall and also by monitoring the concentration of sodium chloride in the tubular filtrate as it passes through the macula densa. This information is then used in determining how much renin should be released to keep the arterial blood pressure in its normal range and also to maintain a relatively constant glomerular filtration rate. In this figure, we demonstrate the action of renin okay, in the monitoring and in the regulation of the glomerular filtration rate and also in the regulation of uh, systemic blood pressure. As you see, the angiotensin gene is released by the action of renin, it will be converted into the angiotensin 1. And then there is an enzyme called the angiotensin converting enzyme will convert the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, which is the active form of angiotensin. It will act indirectly by stimulating the release of aldosterone from adrenal gland. And so the aldosterone will increase the preload and the angiotensin 2 will act indirectly by increase the afterload and this is by increasing the sodium reabsorption by the tub proximal tubular system. Here we are. How the renin angiotensin aldosterone system will regulate our glomerular filtration rate and blood pressure. When we expose to dehydration, as uh, in uh, severe thirst or diarrhea or hemorrhage, or when we have sodium deficiency, there will be decrease in blood volume. This decrease in blood volume will cause decrease in blood pressure. So how our body regulate the blood pressure? This is the pathway. When there is decrease in blood pressure, there will be stimulation to the juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney. How? Because they have a ability to sense the sodium concentration and also to sense the blood pressure by the stretch of the afferent arterial. When there is decrease in the blood pressure, there will be increase in the secretion of renin from the juxtaglomerular cells of the kidney. 
Under the way, liver will produce angino, angiotensinogen. <coughs> so, angiotensinogen, which is responsible for the conversion of renin into the angiotensin 1. Angiotensinogen is produced by the liver cells. It will act to convert an renin into angiotensin 1. Then, angiotensin 1 will be converted into angiotensin 2 by the effect of angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin converting enzyme. It will convert the angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. This angiotensin converting enzyme is produced by the lung cells. So, the active form, which is the angiotensin 2, will act in two directions. It will act on the adrenal gland to increase aldosterone secretion from the adrenal gland, which will result in increased sodium and water reabsorption and increased secretion of potassium and hydrogen in urine. This will result in increased sodium and water reabsorption and that will lead to increase in blood volume and increase in blood pressure which will return to its normal condition. Angiotensin 2 also will act directly and cause vasoconstriction of the arterioles and will lead to increase the glomerular filtration rate and increase in blood pressure which return to the normal condition. Endocrine functions of the kidney are additional functions of the kidney, which will help in regulating blood fluid and electrolytes. The kidney's function as an endocrine organ in that they produce chemical mediators that travel through the blood to distant sites where they exert their functions. Kidneys participate in controlling of blood pressure by the effect of renin angiotensin mechanism as we discussed before a few minutes. Also, kidney is responsible for the regulation of calcium metabolism by activating vitamin D. You have to understand what is the meaning of activation of vitamin D. And also, the kidney is important in the regulation of blood cell production through the synthesis of erythropoietin hormone. As we discussed before a few minutes, the renal system play, play an important role in the short-term and long-term regulation of blood pressure by the effect of renin, which is synthesized and stored in the juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney. This enzyme will cause decrease. This enzyme will release in response to decrease in renal blood flow or change in the composition of distal tubular fluid. This enzyme is released in response to decrease in renal blood flow or change in composition of distal tubular fluid and also the renin enzyme is secreted by increasing sympathetic nervous system stimulation as we say renin convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 which has a few vasoconstrictive activity and 
leaves the kidneys and enter to the circulation as it is circulated through the lung. And then by the effect of angiotensin converting enzyme, which catalyze the conversion of angiotensin 1 to the active form, which is the angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor and it acts directly on the kidneys to decrease salt and water excretion. So there will be an increase in the fluid volume inside the body and the return of blood uh, pressure to its normal condition. Here we go. We start talking about erythropoietin. As you know, erythropoietin is a hormone that regulates the differentiation of red blood cells in the bone marrow. 89% and 95% of the erythropoietin is formed in the kidney. It is synthesized as a result of stimulation by tissue hypoxia, which may be brought about by anemia and high altitude, or due to impaired oxygenation of tissues caused by cardiac or pulmonary disease. So, Synthesis of arthropoietin is stimulated by tissue hypoxia as that occur in anemic patients and also in a high altitude and you have to know why arthropoietin secretion increase in a high altitude. You can answer me by the email or Impaired oxygenation of the tissue, which may be caused by cardiac or pulmonary disease. These factors will increase the stimulation that lead to synthesis of more arthropoietin by the kidney. In persons with end-stage kidney disease, where the kidney functions are impaired, they will develop anemia. Why? Because inability of the kidney to produce arthropoietin. This anemia is usually managed not by giving the patient iron, but by administration of epoietin alpha, which is a synthetic form of arthropoietin that produced through DNA technology to stimulate arthropoiesis, which is the regulation of uh, red blood cells production. Another important function of the kidney is regulation of calcium in the body through the activation of vitamin D. Activation of vitamin D occurs in the kidneys. It increase calcium absorption from the gastrointestinal tract and help to regulate the calcium deposition in bone. It has a weak stimulatory effect on renal calcium absorption. We will discuss uh, that in the next minute. Although vitamin D is not synthesized and released from an endocrine gland, it's often considered as a hormone because of its pathway of molecular activation as mechanism of action. This ho hormone, which means vitamin D, is present in several forms. The first is the natural vitamin D, which is called the cholecalciferol, which results from ultraviolet irradiation of the skin by exposure to the, to the sunlight. 
while the synthetic form of vitamin D, which is called ergocalciferol, which is derived from a radiation of ergosterol. The active form of vitamin D, which is responsible for the maintenance of calcium in the body, is called 125-dihydroxycol calciferol. This is the active form of vitamin D. Colcalciferol and ergocalciferol, which is the natural and the synthetic form of vitamin D, must undergo chemical transformation to become active form. What are these chemical transformations? First, it should be converted to 25-hydroxycolcalciferol, which occur in the liver, and then by addition of another hydroxyl group to the colcalciferol at the site 1, it is called the 125-dihydroxycolcalciferol, and this is occur in the kidney. That's why we called the kidney as the site of activation of vitamin D. The first activation occur by addition of a hydroxyl group at the site 25, which occur in the liver, and then the final activation of vitamin D occur in the kidney by addition of another hydroxyl group at the site 1 of the called calciferol uh, molecule. So the active form is called the 125-dihydroxycol calciferol. A person with end stage renal disease are unable to transform vitamin D to its active form. So, these patients must rely on pharmacological preparation of active vitamin D, which is called the calciterol, for maintaining mineralization of their bones. Because of renal disease, there will be no ability of the renal cells to activate vitamin D, so we have to give the patient a pharmacological preparation of vitamin D to maintain mineralization of the bones. In this diagram, as you see, there will be an intestinal absorption of vitamin D from the diet, okay? or exposure to sunlight and production of coal calciferol, which is vitamin D3. The form of vitamin D that is uh, absorbed from the intestine is called vitamin D2, which is a transformed into vitamin D3 by the exposure to the sunlight. In the liver, there will be addition of hydroxyl group at the site of 25, and in the kidney, there will be addition of another hydroxyl group at the site of the site 1. And this form is the active form of vitamin D3. What vitamin D3 will cause? It will cause increased intestinal absorption of calcium and will increase the calcium deposition in the bone. And we will discuss this in the next semester in the endocrine functions. Now, an important subject we have to understand is the acid-base balance. And why we need to understand the acid-base balance? Because the kidney is an important organ for regulation the acid-base balance in our body. Metabolic activities of the body require a, preci a precise regulation of acid-base 
balance which is reflected by the pH of extracellular fluid. Membrane excitability, enzyme system, chemical reactions all depend on the pH being regulated within a narrow physiological range. Normally, the concentration of body acids and bases is regulated so that the pH of extracellular fluid is maintained within a very narrow range, which is 7.35 to 7.45. What do we mean by acid? Acid is a molecule that can release a hydrogen ion, while base is a molecule that can accept or combine with an hydrogen ion. The most important are carbonic acid, which is a weak acid derived from the carbon dioxide, and bicarbonate, which is a weak base. Why we discuss the carbonic acid and carbonate? Because they are composed of CO2, which is released through the tissue metabolism. The concentration of hydrogen ion in the body fluid is low compared with other ions. For example, sodium ion is present at a concentration approximately 1 million times that of hydrogen ion. So it is present in a very low concentration compared with other ions. Because of low concentration of hydrogen ion in the body so hydrogen ion concentration is commonly expressed in terms of pH that is why we use the pH because the hydrogen ion is present in a very low concentration compared with other ions so we express it in terms of pH so what is pH? pH represents the negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration in milliequivalent here liter. It is represent the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion. Because the pH is inversely related to the hydrogen ion, it is inversely related to hydrogen ion concentration. A low pH indicates a high concentration, as you know, and a high pH indicates a low concentration of hydrogen ion. So, how pH is regulated? The pH of body fluid is regulated by three major mechanisms, including the intracellular and extracellular fluid buffering system, the lungs which control elimination of CO2, of course, and the kidneys which eliminate hydrogen and regulate the elimination of bicarbonate. So the kidney is important in the regulation of acid-base balance in the body. The most important is the intracellular inter and extracellular fluid buffering system, the lungs and the kidneys. This is an overall scheme of acid-base balance show the three lines of defense which are the lung, the intra and extracellular buffer system and the kidneys which excrete acid and make a new bicarbonate. We will discuss it later. The most important in our topic is the regulation of pH by the kidney. So the kidneys regulate the body pH by conserving base by carbonate, conserving and eliminating the hydrogen ion. So we have to eliminate hydrogen and keep the base bicarbonate. Neither the blood buffer system 
nor the respiratory control mechanism for carbon dioxide elimination can eliminate hydrogen from the body. This is accomplished by the kidneys. What we mean by this? The respiratory control mechanism for acid-base balance cannot eliminate hydrogen from our body. The blood buffer system has no ability to eliminate hydrogen from our body. The only one that can help the body in eliminating hydrogen ion from the body is the kidney. That's why we said this is accomplished by the kidneys. Virtually all the hydrogen ions excreted in urine is secreted into the tubular fluid by means of tubular secretory mechanism, as you remember from the last uh, lecture. The lowest tubular fluid pH that can be achieved is 4.4 to 4.5. And you know that this is high in hydrogen ion. The ability of kidneys to secrete hydrogen depends on buffers in urine. As you know, we need a buffer to maintain a constant pH. What are these buffers that help the kidney to eliminate hydrogen from our body? These buffers are present in urine and they combine with the hydrogen ion to prevent changes in the pH. Three major buffers in urine are present, which are the bicarbonate, the phosphate and the ammonia. Bicarbonate ion, which are present in the urine filtrate, combine with the hydrogen ion that have been secreted into the tubular fluid. This results in the formation of carbon dioxide and water, and when we reach to the level of carbon dioxide and water, so we eliminate hydrogen uh, from our body, carbon dioxide will pass into the lung and water will return to the circulation. The carbon dioxide is then absorbed into the tubular cells and bicarbonate is regenerated. So bicarbonate is very important to maintain the acid-base balance in our body and is very important for us to eliminate hydrogen from the body. As we discuss, bicarbonate is present, it will combine with the hydrogen to form the carbonic acid and it will convert it into the water and bicarbonate and so Carbon dioxide will return to the proximal tubular cells and form the bicarbonate. The other buffer in the urine is the phosphate, which is a metabolic end product that is filtered into the tubular fluid. It combines with the secreted hydrogen ion and not reabsorbed. When it is not reabsorbed, it will pass in urine. So, this is the intercalated uh, cells. This is the luminar side of the renal tubule, and this is the blood side. And here we are. This is the hydrogen ion. It will combine with the phosphate, which is the 
end metabolic vortex and form what is called the uh, tetra table acid which is excreted in urine so by this way we eliminate the hydrogen ion and maintain a regular pH. Another buffer in the urine is the ammonia, which is synthesized in the tubular cells by deamination, by deamination of amino acid glutamine which is diffuses into the tubular fluid and combine with hydrogen ion. How ammonia is produced? It is produced by deamination of amino acid glutamine, and then it will diffuse into the tubular fluid and combine with hydrogen ion. As you see, this is the tubular cells. This is the luminar side, and this is the blood side of the uh, tubular system so hydrogen ion will pass to the luminal side combined with the ammonia and NH4 will be formed and this is well excreted in urine so we remove hydrogen ion from the body by combination of hydrogen ion and ammonia and excretion of this product final product in the in the urine result in maintaining the body uh, fluid pH ammonia is formed by the deamination of amino acid glutamine Thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next lecture. You can send me any question on the email. Good luck.